Hi, my name is Kate Lathrop. I'm the program director for the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, and I'm here with my colleague. I'm Jason Moab. I'm a breast medical oncologist at MD Anderson Cancer Center, and I'm the chair of the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance. So we're here to talk a little bit about our lobular breast cancer session that we had here uh, at SABCS yesterday. If you didn't have an opportunity to join us live for that event, definitely go back and catch it on our website. So I have a question for you. You know, it can be really hard to image our patients with lobular carcinoma. And sometimes our imaging modalities, they just don't capture the extent of the disease. So what are your thoughts on how we should be imaging our patients with lobular carcinomas? Yes, thank you for this question. But first I want to applaud the organizing committee for doing an ILC specific education session this year. And I hope that will continue. But I really want to applaud them and commend them for this amazing effort. Yes. Uh, Imaging lobular breast cancer has been very challenging, but thankfully there is stuff we can do today to improve those uh, uh, those imaging modalities. So, for the early set uh, for the early setting, we can do we can start by doing contrast enhanced mammogram that are not being done much around, but the, this technology is available and it works really well for lobular. And you can go back to my presentation to hear more about the data. For the metastatic setting, uh, there is a technology available today called FES PET that is really good at imaging. Uh, both for staging purposes and for uh, detecting recurrences of ILC. But there is a lot of other exciting technologies coming in the pipeline. Also, I went through them in uh, my presentation yesterday, and I re highly recommend going back to it. Great. Thank you so much. Um, my other question is, I think one of the reasons we don't really know the best ways to treat lobular carcinoma in comparison to ductal is we don't always have a, a high percentage of patients with lobular carcinoma on our trials, and our trials aren't specifically designed to look at lobular carcinoma. So any thoughts on what we should be doing as investigators when we're writing trials and thinking about our patients with lobular carcinoma? Thank you for this excellent question. Yes, that has been the struggle historically because a lobular breast cancer patient will always group with the more common invasive ductal carcinoma. And those patients were lost in between those big, uh, big numbers of patients. And we couldn't, the study was never powered to detect any differences in the patient uh, that had lobular histology versus ductal histology. So mainly the, the conclusion of this data were driven by the, by the patient who had ductal histology and they were generalized to the patient with lobular uh, breast cancer. We can start first by making sure we are powering our studies to have enough lobular patients. So put a, put like a limit, like let's say put 20% accrual to be lobular patient to make sure that not all the, the spots on those studies are being taken by, by other histologies. But also it's really important and we, we, we tried to highlight it yesterday in those three excellent presentation that uh, lobular cancer is very different than ductal uh, carcinoma and it deserves to have its own dedicated clinical trials. If you look at the numbers of incidents of uh, ILC every year, it's about 44,000. It's double that of ovarian cancer and cervical cancer combined. Yet those other type of cancer do get their own studies. I think lobular deserve its own set of studies and we are working on that. Yeah, it's so important, you're right. And I know you guys are working on specific targets, specific drugs. Do you want to name just maybe one of those? Yeah, so there is a lot of uh, uh, pathways that are very active in ILC. And because ILC has a universal loss of ECAD adherent, and that can be targetable with a ROS1 inhibitor. There is two studies in Europe. We had zero studies in the US, mm -hmm. but that's going to change very soon. We're getting two studies coming very close uh, in the next couple of months. Well, that's excellent news. And hopefully everybody who puts patients on clinical trials will look out for those trials and consider opening them at their institutions. Thank you so much for joining us Thank in you. our SABCS Snippets booth. And again, we encourage you guys to go out and watch the, the whole session. It was, it was really wonderful. Amazing Thank you. meeting. Be on the lookout. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.